Hello everyone, this is Steve at stevefrompphoto.com <clears throat> and I am here today with my follow-up video on the Fujifilm X100. Um, I'm going to go over a little bit of the menu system today and all of that kind of good stuff. And um, I just wanted to show you two guys. I, I put a soft release on my X100 um, and it looks pretty cool. A nice red one along with an artisan and artist red strap. It's a cloth strap. It's very soft, very comfortable, and uh, it's it's one of the longer artist and artisan straps, so you can kind of wear it uh, down on your body. Um, but I'm still loving the X100. It's a great camera. A little quirky in its uh, some of its operation, like manual focus and startup times and and so forth. But other than that, the image quality is very very good. And the, the looks and the comments I get when walking around with this camera, everybody thinks that it's an old 35 millimeter film camera. So let's go over the menu system so you can see how it works and all of the features. Okay, first thing I want to show you is the viewfinder. You see this lever on the front. When you're looking through the camera, right now it's an optical viewfinder mode. So that means you're looking through an optical viewfinder with an overlay on it that shows all your shooting data. If you turn this lever right here you can see it black out because it's turned into an EVF. You can go optical viewfinder or electronic viewfinder just by the switch in the front. Okay here's the back of the X100. You have your play button up here which will play back your images when you have your memory card in them. Here is the AE button where you choose your metering mode. So you hold it down and then you use the wheel to choose your metering mode. Multi, spot, which spot metering works very well on here, and average, which is more like a center weighted. Um, I actually been shooting with the average center weighted mode the most. Um, this lets you pick where you want your AF point. Okay, you just turn the knob if you don't want it center. I just use the single AF point right in the middle and I always shoot by focus and recompose every shot you see on my website has been taken in that manner with focus and recompose view mode that'll switch between LCD and EVF or turn it to auto mode so when your eye hits the viewfinder it automatically switches uh, over here is if you're in manual focus mode and you press the autofocus button here um, this will act as an autofocus because the manual focus is very frustrating it takes forever and ever another thing I wanted to do is show you how long it takes to start up I'm gonna turn the power on right now okay it's on but it's not ready to shoot just yet see there's nothing happening so you have to wait and you'll see there we go, now it's ready to shoot. So that's how long it takes to start up. I think it's about 2.2 seconds. And there is a faster startup mode, but it supposedly sucks the battery life. Okay, I have this button up top. When you get the camera, it comes configured as an ISO button. But I reconfigured it to change, to turn on and off the ND filter. So you hold it down and you can turn it on or off because if you're out in the bright sunlight and you want to shoot at a wider aperture like f2 you just turn on the ND filter and you can do that um, also if you want to change the ISO let's go into the menu system self timer you have your self timer settings of 2 seconds and 10 seconds just like any other camera your ISO goes from 200 to 6400 with a special setting of 12800 uh, if you activate that. I have mine set at 200. Image size, you can choose all these different image sizes, 16 by 9, 3 by 2, and large, medium, or small. Image quality, you can pick uh, how you want your JPEGs, and if you want JPEG and RAW, fine and RAW, normal RAW. Dynamic range, you can set your dynamic range from 100%, 200%, and 400%, and it actually works um, if you set it to the higher ranges, 200 and 400, you kind of get less contrast and uh, more, you get more information in the shadows, basically. Your film simulation. You have standard, which is Provia, uh, Velvia, Velvia, Vivid, 
Astia, which is supposed to give you a softer color. Uh, many people think this is reversed because on the X100 right now, the Astia gives you a little more punch and contrast than the Provia does. You also have your monochrome black and white, and then you can add filters to it. Yellow filter, red filter, green filter. You have sepia, and then that's that's about it. I keep, I've keep i been keeping it on Astia, uh, but that only affects the JPEGs. If you shoot raw, it doesn't matter. There's the ND filter. It's off right now. White balance shift, I already showed you. You can even adjust the color to low, medium, high, sharpness, low, medium, high, medium, hard. Um, you can set your highlight tone to standard, medium, hard, or hard, or soft. That's how it renders the highlights. So if you want a more uh, contrasty scene, same with the shadows. Noise reduction, you can set it to low, medium, low, standard, medium, high, or high. Uh, flash, um, you can uh, customize your settings and save it into one of... Uh, three different custom folders so if you want to call up custom settings you can do that. Uh, in your settings menu your date and time, time difference, language, silent mode on which makes the camera really silent. If you turn it on off you get the little clicks and the little fake shutter sound basically um, and which is still pretty quiet. So I keep mine in silent mode because I like it as quiet as possible. Format the card, image display, how long you want the image displayed, um, how you want the frames to be counted, the volume of the op, you know, the, of the camera if you have the sounds on, the shutter, shutter volumes you can pick between different shutter sounds. They're all fake though. Um, LCD brightness, auto power off, OVF power save mode, quick start mode. Let me turn on quick start mode here. Um, this is where you can set your button on top, the FN button. And ND filter, you can do it to change the film modes, dynamic range, image quality, image size, ISO, self timer, preview depth of field. Movie, you can use that as a movie button. Um, AF mode. So right now I have mine set to ND filter because I live in sunny Arizona, basically. ISO auto control. You can turn it on. Choose your max sensitivity. I have it set to 3200 because the camera does really well at 3200. Minimum shutter speed. I have mine set to 1 40th, but you know what? I'm going to change it to 1 30th because you can handhold this guy at pretty low uh, shutter speeds. Red eye removal. AF illumination. Uh, when I go to turn that on, it's telling me to deactivate silent mode. I don't really know why. You have to deactivate silent mode if you want your AF illuminator on. Oh, the uh, lamp. It has a AF assist lamp, that's right. Uh, so when you have it in silent mode, the AF assist lamp does not work. Um, so you have all these different options, focus scale units, feet or meters, framing guidelines, color space, long exposure noise reduction, auto rotate, background color of your menus. You can pick all these different cool colors. Let's put orange. There we go. Guidance display. So there you go, that's the menu system basically. Okay, you also have your drive mode, which you click up on the control wheel to get to the drive mode. This gives you the option of uh, one image at a time, um, multiple images, five frames per second, three frames per second, uh, bracketing, ISO bracketing, film simulation bracketing, dynamic range bracketing, motion panorama, which is the sweet panorama mode, and the movie mode. So if you want to do a movie, you put that into movie mode. Um, macro, turn it on or off. And a good way to do macro without having to turn on macro is to use your EVF, put it in manual focus, and use this button to focus. You can get really close that way. Um, so right now I'm going to turn macro off. White balance, here's where you set your white balance. Auto is uh, pretty, pretty good on this camera. And flash, I don't have flash activated because I have the camera in silent mode. And uh, I'm not a flash guy anyway, so I never use it. Uh, display on the back, you can choose standard display, a custom display which has a level gauge. Um, and you also, oops, I'm back to macro, sorry. Um, let's see. And you also have an info display which shows all your camera settings. Um, so right now I'm, the lens is set at f4, I'm an average metering, center focal point, um, ISO is on auto up to 3200. That's not the ISO you're going to be using. It tells you what you have your highest set at 
and once you focus on your image is when it tells you what it's going to use. So it's going to use 200 because I'm in a little light box here. And as for the front of the camera, this is as I already showed you, the lever to change from the optical viewfinder to the electronic viewfinder. You have your lens here. You can turn it manually to what aperture you want, which is really cool. I wish the Leica X1 had that from the get-go. So F2 if you want the creamy um, out-of-focus backgrounds, if you want sharp. By F4 this lens is razor sharp. Very good lens. Um, also on your top dials, this is where you set your shutter speed. I just shoot it in aperture priority mode. Your shutter button and your exposure compensation is done via a wheel. So that's nice and easy to implement. And uh, you have your hot shoe up top and on the side can't forget all this stuff. You have your manual focus, autofocus, um, and autofocus continuous modes. And on this side, you have your HDMI port and your USB, USB port for when you update the firmware of the camera. So, okay, I have it set up to show the uh, focus confirmation. So, I am going to focus on that text and we're going to see how fast it focuses. When I count to three, I'm going to push the shutter release. One, two, three. So it's focused. It's focused, but of course it's already focused to that distance. Um, so if you're in good light, the focus is pretty quick. Very quick. Um, if you want to make a movie, you have to go to the drive mode. We'll put it on movie. There we go. And now, when you press the shutter button, you're recording a movie. And there's no manual focus in movie mode. You can't change the aperture once you start movie mode. There's no image stabilization, so it's it can get a little shaky. Um, if you're on a tripod, the video would look gorgeous. It shoots 24p, 720hd, um, all in this little jam-packed body that's pretty small. Um, it's smaller than an M9, um, about the same size as an Olympus EP2, but taller. That's about it. So there you go. There is the Fujifilm X100, probably the hottest camera release of the year. Um, it's selling like hotcakes, and you can even, like I did, pimp it out with a nice, cool artisan and artist red strap and a soft release. Very cool. And there you go. I love this camera. It's a really great camera, and I am keeping it. This is one for me. Um, and that's about it. So I hope you keep coming back to stevehuffphoto.com. I'm always adding new stuff, new reviews, new guest articles, new daily inspiration photos. It's a cool place to hang out and talk photography with a bunch of like-minded people. So come on by at stevehuffphoto.com, and I hope to see you there soon. Thank you.